time is it? It's just after eight. Oh no! Don't worry. Uh, do I look good? You look terrific. <sighs> Now tell me about this date. Will you have a nice little table for two? I think Chan is also asking two of his friends. Oh, the more the merrier. <laughs> What will you eat? It's an Indian restaurant. I'll probably order a curry. Delicious. I adore Indian cooking. Do you? Do you recommend I try anything special? Why don't you try a biryani? What is a biryani exactly? It's a fabulous rice dish. It's a bit similar to your Spanish paella. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. And will you have something to drink? I'd like some wine tonight. Do you like white or red wine? It depends on the curry. Very sensible. <laughs> Now, don't drink too much. No, no, I won't. I'll only have one or two glasses. Oh, I'm nervous for the time. Don't be nervous about the time. You have loads of time. Let's see. Oh, my heavens! Eight ten. I'm going to be late. No, you're not. I will call the very nice minicab,、mm -hmm. and he will be here in no time. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Yes, this is Agatha Johnson here. Fine. Thank you. How are you? Glad to hear it. Yes. Can you send one of your best drivers? That's right. Chesworth Gardens, number seven. Ask him to ring the bell. How long will it be? Okay, thanks. Good evening. How long will it be? She says the cab will be here in five minutes. Okay. You look like a model. <laughs> thanks.、Uh, how much do you think the cab fare will be? Probably around ten quid. Quid? Oh, pounds. Oh. Do you have enough money with you? Yes, thanks. Good. Oh, there he is now. Okay. <laughs> Bye. See you. Night, night. Have a good time. Harold. Oh, I miss you. Hi, here I am. What are you doing? Ah,、oh, you're having a drink. Can I have one too? Hmm. Maybe it would be better to have one after our lesson. Today we are going to talk about countable nouns, such as glasses, bottles. And uncountable nouns like wine, champagne, rice, bread, water. Then we will see how we can use the word some with uncountable nouns and any in negative sentences. I'd like to bake a cake. I need eggs, flour. Sugar, some milk. Oh, I don't have any butter. Hmm. Lastly, we will see how to ask what time it is and how to answer. What time is it? It's lesson time. In this episode, Elena is getting ready to go out for dinner with friends, and she says, "I'll only have one or two glasses." Glass, table, dish, are countable nouns. A countable noun is a noun that has both a plural and a singular form. One glass, two glasses, one dish, two dishes. Other nouns are uncountable. Uncountable nouns do not refer to individual objects and cannot be counted. Wine. Rice, water, money, time.
countable nouns are always singular, and we need to use the word some. I'd like some wine. You have some money. In interrogative and negative sentences, we put any where the word some was. I don't have any money. Elena doesn't have any time. Okay, is that clear? I hope so. Let's move on to something different. At the beginning of this episode, Elena asks Agatha, "What time is it?" Do you remember what Agatha answers? Right, it's just after eight. You can say, "What time is it?" "What's the time?" or "Could you tell me the time?" The easiest way to tell the time is by simply giving the hour and then the minutes. It's eight ten. It's nine thirty. It's ten forty-five. But you can say also it's ten past eight. It's half past nine. It's a quarter to eleven. Can you tell me what time it is now? We can use a clock after the number, but only when it is the exact hour. You can say two o'clock, five o'clock, and so on. The train arrives at nine fifteen a.m. The restaurant opens at seven thirty p.m. Do you know what a.m. and p.m. mean? Wow, you are clever. A.M. is anti-meridian and P.M. is post-meridian. So A.M. and P.M. tell us whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. By the way, what time is it? Oh, help! I have an appointment with Dylan, and I am going to be late. Bye, and see you soon. At last, you had a long sleep. Yes. What's the time? It's almost twelve thirty. Oof! It is so nice to sleep. Yes. <laughs> And what about last night? Tell me everything. <laughs> There were four of us: Chan, his friend Jerry, and Jerry's girlfriend Kate. Oh, is Kate nice? Yes, she's very nice, very funny.、Hmm. She's at nursing school. Oh, how old is she?、Mm, she is twenty. And what about your dinner? I like Indian food. It is very.、Um, how do you say this? Like, <sighs> yes, <Yeah> . spicy. Oh, <laughs> yes, Indian food can be hot and spicy. Uh, we had some white wine from Kent. White wine with gas. Sparkling wine. Oh, yes. England does have some very good sparkling wines. <laughs> Jerry and Kate only speak English. That's good practice for you. Yes, but it's very difficult and very tiring. Well, you see, we have coffee. <laughs> I need to ask your opinion about something. Yes. <clears throat> Harold says I should get a job too. You want a job? Well, it gets lonely here during the day. Victor and you are both at school. You have a fun job at the video store. Oh, you want to work at the video store too? No. I want to work as a salesperson, selling accessories and and clothes. Oh, you're good at that. You think so? Yes. Will you work in a boutique? No, I'd like to work in a big store, a department store. Oh. See, I'm a good shopper. I think I'll be a good seller too. You will be excellent. Help me practice my sales pitch before you leave for work and before Victor gets home. What time does Victor get home? He should be back around six.、Hmm. Okay. 
This is the company I'm going to apply to. Mm -hmm. Churchill's. They sell very nice women's clothing, and I should get a big discount myself. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I help you, madam? Um, no thanks. I'm just looking. Why don't you try on this dress? It suits you. Mm. It is a pretty dress, but it's too big. Oh, madam, we have it in smaller sizes. Do you have it in another color? It comes in blue, green, and pink. How much is it? Madam, it's on sale. It's only 42 pounds. Hmm, okay, I'll take it. Very good choice, madam. See? You're a natural salesperson. I'm going to apply at Churchill's tomorrow. Oh, okay. Don't say anything to Victor. No, I won't. I want to surprise him. Okay. <laughs> Hi there, good to see you. Do you like shopping? We can go shopping together, but first, let's learn some English, okay? Today we are talking about the verb to like and its negative and interrogative forms. Do you like shopping? Agatha likes it, but Victor doesn't like it. After that, we will see the comparison of adjectives. This fork is smaller than the other ones. Then we will talk about prices and how to ask for a price. Finally, you will learn about clothing and colors. We are starting with the verb to like. In this episode, Elena wakes up late Sunday morning after her night out and tells Agatha about her dinner. Can you remember what Elena says about the food? I like Indian food. I like, you like, he, she, it likes, we like, and so on. In English, to like is very much like the verb to love. So, you can say, I like sparkling wine, and I love sparkling wine. Do you like sparkling wine? This is the interrogative form. Does Elena like her friends? Do they like shopping? Does Agatha like staying at home? No, she doesn't. So, the negative form is, I don't like, you don't like, he, she, it doesn't like, we don't like, and so on. For next time, you could make a list of what you like and what you don't, okay? Agatha tells Elena she'd like to find a job in a department store, so they practice being customer and salesperson. Elena says that's a pretty dress, but it's too big, and Agatha answers we have smaller sizes. Do you know what smaller is? Right. It's a comparative adjective. With comparatives, it's very simple. We just add an ER at the end of the adjective. Smaller, bigger, shorter, longer, and so on. I can also say, this is the smallest fork. This is a superlative, right? With the superlative, we add an EST, est, at the end of the adjective. Smallest, biggest, longest. But this is true only for all short, one syllable adjectives. With longer, multi syllable adjectives, there's a difference. Let's see some examples. Difficult, more difficult, the most difficult, and expensive, more expensive, the most expensive. Since we are going shopping, as we said at the beginning of our lesson, 
you have to learn how to ask about prices. How much is this dress? How much is it? How much are those shoes? How much are they? You can also say, how much does it cost? And how much do they cost? If you want to buy some clothes, you will have to ask about size and color too. Do you have a smaller or bigger size? What colors do you have? Do you have green? Do you have blue? It's late. The shops are closing soon. Bye and see you next time. Hello. Hello. How uh, are your classes? Good, thank you. How is your art school? Oh, it's okay. I had a test today. A test? Mm. A test in art history. That's interesting. Mm. What about me? What about my day? Oh, uh, Aggie, dear, how was your day? Betty take you shopping? No, actually. No shopping. No shopping? Mm -hmm. What on earth happened? I got a job. <laughs> Where? When? Doing what? How? <laughs> when do you start? I start the day after tomorrow. I'm working 10 till 5, Monday to Friday. Congratulations. Mr. James is my supervisor. Very nice man. A real gentleman. Where are you working? Church Hills, off St. James Park. Mm. I'm a sales assistant in the ladies' department. Well, that's handy. You can take the circle line. Does Harold know? It was his idea. Is this a permanent job? I'm working over the Christmas period. Mm. They need more staff. Mr. James says, perhaps I can stay on after the holidays. Good. Oh, what are your plans for the holidays, Elena? Will you spend Christmas with us? Yes, please, Elena. <laughs> I'd love to, but my classes finish on the 21st. Well, I have Christmas Day and Boxing Day off. I'll cook a turkey. <laughs> that is very kind, but my return ticket is for the 23rd. It just seems so soon. Mm. Oh, dear. Perhaps the weather will be bad. London is famous for its fog. Maybe your flight home will be delayed or, or canceled. They could close the airport. You simply can't go. <laughs> Agatha, Elena's here for eight weeks. I'm not going yet. Mm. Well, we'll see. Mm. Victor, what about your classes? Uh, we finish up this year on December 21st after my final exams. What day of the week is New Year's Eve? It's Monday this year. Mm. Monday. Oh, it's so sad. Everything ends. Let's take a photo of Elena. Mm -hmm. Oh, Elena and Victor, together! Oh, Agatha. Uh, smile! Please, no. Smile! Uh, there. Can I take a photo of you, Agatha? Oh, dear, no. Oh, please. Okay. Thank you. Hi, nice to see you again. Today we are going to learn a lot of interesting things. So sit down, take a pen and some paper, and let's start. Oh, but before we start, I'd like to tell you the latest news. I need a new swimming costume. Why do you need a new swimming costume, Gabrielle? because I'm going to Miami. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm going there by plane. Oh, I hope the flight is not delayed. Is there anybody who would like to come with me? Well, I guess there are many of you who would like to go to Miami. 
But back to the lesson. And what I've just said is going to be very helpful. First, we'll study the verb to need and its negative and interrogative forms. After that, we'll talk about transportation problems and when you use why and because. Then we'll look at two expressions. There is and there are, and their interrogative and negative forms. Finally, we'll learn the names of some public holidays, such as Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and New Year's Day, and some useful expressions related to time. In this episode, Agatha tells Victor and Elena that she has taken on a job as a sales assistant. Then Agatha asks Elena if she will stay with them during the Christmas holidays, but Elena is going back to Spain on December 23rd. Talking about her new job, Agatha says they need more staff. So let's talk now about the verb to need. Do you remember when Elena needs to leave? <laughs> She needs to leave on the 23rd. I need, you need, he, she, it needs, we need, etc. To need means to require, to want something very much. I need a new swimming costume. Do you need my help? No, thank you. I don't need it. These are the negative and interrogative forms. Do you need? Does he or she need? No, I don't need. You don't need. He doesn't need. She doesn't need, etc. As you have seen, Elena is going back to Spain. Perfect. You are brilliant. Unfortunately, when traveling, there may be problems. Why is the flight delayed? Because of the fog. Why is the train delayed? Because of a strike. So we use the word why for the question and because for the answer. Why do you study English? Because it's useful and fun. At least I hope so. Why do you need a new swimming costume, Gabrielle? Because I'm going to Miami. Let's look at the two expressions I mentioned earlier. There is and there are. For example, there is a book on the table. There are some books on the table. Now, the interrogative form. Are there any classes? Is there enough time? You can answer, there aren't any classes, and there isn't any time. This is the negative form. Right, to finish the lesson in this episode, Agatha said, they need more staff for the Christmas period. So let's look at some public holidays. Christmas Day, Boxing Day, December 26, New Year's Day, Easter Sunday, Independence Day. Even though I'm an adult, my favorite holiday still is Christmas. And yours? Hmm, time to go. But bye and see you soon. Repair the cup. Repair air, air, air. Hello, darling. What about the air? Um, uh, air, airline, airplane. Oh, these are new words you're learning at school. Uh, yes. We're learning words about travel. Ah, that's useful. Mm -hmm. Are your teachers nice? Yes, they're very nice. Splendid. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm practicing um, the airplane. You're pretending to be... I'm pretending to be on an airplane. Oh, that sounds like fun. Mm. Can I pretend too? Uh, please. My teachers want me to practice. Okay. Well... I can be the 
glamorous lady mm -hmm. at the check-in desk. You be the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Stand here. Can I have your ticket, please? Here it is. And your passport? Here's my passport. Thank you. Do you have any bags to check in? Uh, I have this bag. That can go with you on board as a carry-on. Okay, carry-on. <laughs> now, darling, do you prefer the window or aisle? Um, sorry? <laughs> your seat. The aisle or window? Oh, um, I, um, I'd like the window seat, please. All right, here's your boarding pass. You will be boarding at 1020, gate 11. Have a nice trip. <laughs> Thank you. Good girl. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Where is your trip to? Um, Los Angeles. Well, then I must be the customs officer. Um, customs? When you arrive in Los Angeles, they check your passport. Oh, yes. Yes. So, I'm the gorgeous customs <laughs> officer. You're the traveler. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Name, please. Elena Fuentes. Can you spell that? F-U-E-N-T-E-S. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of your visit? Business or pleasure? Uh, pleasure. I'm here on holiday. How long are you staying? Six weeks. Mm -hmm. And where are you staying? I always stay with Brad Pitt, of course. <laughs> <laughs>
have. He doesn't have a girlfriend, but we don't have the book. In the interrogative form, we put do or does before the subject. So we can ask, do you have a pencil? Yes, I do. Does she have any children? Yes, she does. Do they have a dog? No, they don't. Although it sounds a bit old-fashioned, sometimes we also say, have you any children? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Now, I'd like to show you something I'm very proud of. Marmalade. Yes, I made it myself yesterday afternoon, and it's delicious. Would you like to taste some? Maybe with some toast and butter? Right. We use would like to offer something, or do you remember in the sitcom, Elena said, I'd like the window seat, please. Well, I'd like is the contraction of I would like, and we use it to express wishes and preferences. We say, I would like some tea, please. I'd like some tea, please. Would you like a sandwich? Yes, I would. Would you like a salad? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to drink a gin and tonic at 10 in the morning. Would you? <laughs> Okay, finally, I'd like to look at the English alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now, let's try spelling some words. I am Gabrielle. G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. We are studying English. E-N-G-L-I-S-H. My father's name is Jack. J-A-C-K. Can you spell your name? Go on, have a try. Well, that's all for today. Keep practicing that alphabet. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! You ready? Okay. I have not played the spectacularly beautiful air hostess. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Welcome to Johnson Airways. What's your ticket number, madam? My seat's 24D. Right this way, please. Is this your bag? Yes, it is. Please place it under your seat. Or stow it in the overhead locker. Now, fasten your seat belts. Can I be the passenger? Of course. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, madam. My headset doesn't work. Oh, have you got a newspaper? Excuse me. Can I have another glass of champagne? Can I see the duty-free catalog? There it is. How much is that in Euro? Sorry, can you speak more slowly? <laughs> I'm tired. Traveling is tiring. Let's check you into your hotel. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Welcome to the Johnson Hotel. Good evening. I have a booking for tonight. Under what name, madam? Fuentes. No, Pitt. <laughs> May I see your passport, please? Here it is. Thank you, madam. Here is your room key. Your room number is 217. 
on the second floor. Thank you. What time tomorrow? Check out is at 12 noon. Hmm. I'd like a wake up call at 8.30, please. Breakfast is from 7 to 9. Thank you. Good evening. The TV doesn't work. Oh, do you have a map? Uh, the window does not open. Enough! <laughs> well done! <laughs> Thank you. Now let's get some supper. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Are you ready for another super English lesson? Do you like traveling? I love it. And you probably like it, too. Okay, so take your suitcases and let's go. Today we are going to learn about the verb can and its negative and interrogative forms. I can sing very well. I can't play the piano, but I can play the guitar. Can you play the piano? Great, then we can play together. After that, we will compare can and want. Jade can't speak Spanish very well, but she wants to learn it, so she's studying hard. Then we will talk about the imperative and the negative imperative. Drive slowly. Don't smoke. Finally, we'll see the demonstrative adjectives this, that, these, those. This book. That book. These books. Those books. Let's start with Ken, okay? Agatha can have another glass of champagne. Elena can speak English. I can teach you a lot of things. Have you noticed anything unusual about the third person singular? Right! With the verb can, the third person singular does not use an S. I can, you can, he, she, it can, we can, you can, they can. Can is a modal verb and it means to be able. I can drive a car. I am able to drive a car. How about the negative and interrogative forms of Ken? Can I see the duty-free catalog? Can I smoke? No, you can't. The negative form of Ken is can't or cannot. And the interrogative form is can I? Can you? Can you go out tonight? No, I can't, but I want to. Can you guess what is the difference between can and want? I can go out means I have the ability to do it. I want to go out means that I have the desire to do it. You want to learn English. Let's practice it. Which brings us to our next point, the imperative. At the beginning of this episode, Agatha is pretending to be a flight attendant. She says, Please, place your bag under your seat. Fasten your seatbelt. It's usually better to use please. Please sit down. Please give me that duty-free catalog. To make the imperative negative, we simply put don't in front of it. Can you think of what you can't do on an airplane? Don't smoke. Don't use your mobile phones, and so on. Finally, we are talking about this, that, and the plurals, these, those. This is a ticket. That is a wallet. These are tickets. Those are wallets. They are called demonstrative adjectives. 
Okay, I think it's enough for today. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Bye and see you soon. Um, is that Britannia restoration shop? Can you repair a ceramic vase? Oh, thank you. Um, what is your shop? Mm, could you say that again? 19A Britannia Street, near King's Cross. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, what does tube mean? Oh, the train, <laughs> the underground, yes. No, could you say that again? Oh. Between King's Cross Road and Gray's Inn Road. Thank you very much. Um, wait, hello? Yes, um, what time do you close? Oh dear, six. Thank you, goodbye. I have to go there before my shift. Hello? Oh, hello, Chan. Yes, I'm looking forward to tonight. Uh, where do you want to meet? Queensway. Uh, what time? That's okay. I, I will come from work. I finish at seven, yes. Uh, how do I get there? Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. You sound happy this morning. Oh, yes. Good morning. Oh, can I have a cup too? Yes, of course. Are you going to meet Chong tonight? Yes. Uh, we arranged to meet at a restaurant in uh, Queensway. Oh. Do you know how to get there? Uh, I'm afraid of the underground. Uh, does the bus go there? Yes. You can catch the 928 going towards Golders Green. And then at Notting Hill Gate, take the 94 bus towards Piccadilly. And then um, you want... That sounds very difficult. Are you coming home after work? Uh, no, I'll go directly from work. I think you should come here and I will help you get dressed. And it won't take long from here. Uh, we're meeting at 8.30. Well, then take a cab. A uh, cab? A mini cab. A taxi? Oh, taxi. <laughs> taxi. Do you think Victor's having a good time in Brussels? Boulogne. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, I'm sure he is. Boulogne, yes. Mm. I adore everything French. Oh. Harold and I have such... Fond memories of Paris. <laughs> I would like to go to Paris. Oh, you will. Maybe soon. For your honeymoon. You know, Victor speaks fluent French. I need to find the right man. Well, don't look too far. <laughs> okay, Agatha. I'm going to get dressed. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello. This morning I read a very interesting article about how many people in the world speak English. A great many, believe me. And I am sure you want to be one of them. So let's get down to work. Our lesson today is about the verb could. We are going to talk about could, its conjugation, and its interrogative and negative forms. Could you repair a ceramic vase? Then you'll learn how to ask about something you don't understand. Could you say that again? And then the verb to want. Finally, we'll have a look at the verb to have to. I want to help my students, but they have to study hard. Let's start with the verb could. Our screen is going to help you understand everything. 
Could is the past of can, and it is used to talk about what someone or something was able or permitted to do in the past. In this episode, Elena is trying to find someone to repair. Do you remember what? Right, the ceramic vase. Britannica Restoration can repair the ceramic vase. Elena could go there after work. As in the case with can, you don't have to add an s to the third person singular of could. To make it negative, we just put not after could. You can say could not or couldn't. Elena could not repair the ceramic vase, or she couldn't repair the ceramic vase. The interrogative form is could you. Could you say that again? Or could you speak more slowly? These sentences are very useful when you don't understand something. Don't you agree? In this episode, Elena is having difficulties understanding some words. She asks, "What's a cab?" You can also say, "What does tube mean?" or "What does the word tube mean?" She is asking these questions because she wants to learn the meaning of new words. And this brings us to the next part of our lesson, the verb to want. Elena wants to repair the vase. I want to help you with your English. Notice that you say Agatha wants to help her, not Agatha wants help her. In this episode, Elena says, "I have to go there before my shift." But let's see some other examples. You have to practice your English every day. I. Have to stay on a diet if I don't want to get fat. Hmm. And now I have to go because our time is over. Bye and see you next time. What are your plans for today, Elena?、Uh, I only have two classes before lunch. Then I'm free all afternoon. Oh, you are lucky.、Mm -hmm. Don't you like your job? <laughs> like it? I adore it. <laughs> Mr. James says I'm his best sales assistant.、Whoa. And what will you do with your afternoon? There's a, a fantastic Kubrick festival on. 2001: A Space Odyssey is playing at the Odeon Multiplex. Where is the Odeon? It's on、uh, Tottenham Court Road. That's a brilliant film. I adore Roddy McDowell. You mean Malcolm McDowell, and he's not in 2001. The star is Keir Dulley. Exactly. He's such a doll. What kind of movie is it? It's、uh, science fiction. Now、uh, you must see it. Do you know what time the shows are?、Uh, no, but we can look in the paper.、Mm. There are shows at. At one thirty-five, three forty-five, and five fifty-five. Is it a long film? It runs one hundred and sixty minutes. Yes,、mm. nearly three hours. What time do you finish class? At twelve thirty. Well, you could make the show at one thirty-five. Yes, but I need to go to the bank today too.、Mm. I have my first paycheck. Ah, you need to cash your check. Yes. I want to send some money home too. It's my little brother's birthday next week. Well, you should be able to make the banks before they close at five. Just go to the nearest bank to the cinema. Okay. And、uh, don't forget to bring your passport. You'll need it for identification. You'll need to fill in a money transfer.、Mm -hmm. Are you taking Elena to the movies?、Um, no, Agatha. I'm studying for my final exam. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. I will. Yes, enjoy your movie. I'm also going to send some money home. I got my first paycheck yesterday. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> What's the exchange rate for pounds to pesos?、Uh, Spain has euro currency. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> How silly of me. Yes. Have a good day. Thanks.
Yes, Mr. Charles, this is Elena Fuentes. Yes, the teacup. Is it ready? Okay, I'll pick it up in the afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi everybody. Yesterday I saw a wonderful film with one of my favorite actors. What about you? Who is your favorite actor? Hmm. It's always a good idea to watch films in English. You can learn a lot. Well, today we are going to talk about that too. Ready? First, we are going to review comparatives and superlatives. Big, bigger, the biggest, and examine a few irregular adjectives. After that, we will talk about actors and actresses. Finally, we will talk about types of films. Hmm, quite interesting, don't you think? In this episode, Victor said to Elena, you can go to the nearest bank. So, let's begin with superlatives and comparatives. Do you remember them? Near, nearer, the nearest. You can say, excuse me, where is the nearest bank? Or, where is the nearest cinema? The nearest is the superlative of near, while nearer is the comparative. For example, the Czech cinema is nearer than the Odeon cinema. Notice that when you use the comparative, you have to add then. Agatha said, Mr. James says I'm his best sales assistant. Best is the superlative of good, which is an irregular adjective. So we have good, better, the best, and bad worse, the worst. Since Victor and Elena talk about films in this episode, let's see some related examples. The best film of all. The worst film of all. The new version is better than the old version. The new version is worse than the old one. When you talk about films, you usually mention actors and actresses too. That actress is beautiful. The main actor is good-looking. Beautiful, more beautiful, the most beautiful. Good-looking, better-looking, the best-looking. We generally use beautiful for women. We use good-looking for men and women. Handsome in English is normally used for men and less often for women. To conclude our lesson, let's talk about different types of films. Here are some of them. Costume drama, science fiction, action movie, thriller, comedy, musical, romance. I love a good romance. And you? Oh, I'm sorry, but we've run out of time. So I'll say goodbye for today. See you at the cinema, okay? There is a big problem. What's wrong? That teacup. Yes? That horrible, ugly tea set. But I, uh... Betty gave it to me as a birthday present. I hate that tea set. You do? I had hoped it was disappearing. Yesterday, one of the cups was missing. Yes? And now, today, the teacup is back! <laughs> Elena, sweetie, are you okay? Oh, uh, the bathroom. What about the bathroom? There's a lot of water on the floor. Hi. Hi. Are you all right? 
I have a headache and a stomachache. <clears throat> oh, you poor girl. Maybe you have the flu. Victor, what did you ask Elena? Did she say no? <laughs> Stop it, Aggie. Elena isn't well. What's wrong? Oh, my poor darling, you feel hot. She has a slight temperature. And she says she has stomach aches, too. She needs to lie down. Uh, maybe I'll go to the chemist's and uh, get something for her headache. Yes, good idea. Okay. And when you get back, you can fix the bathroom? What's the matter with the bathroom? There's a leak under the sink. A big leak. Oh, no. I turned off the water. Okay, I'll be back soon. I'll make some tea. A Agatha. Yes? Betty's ugly teacup is back. I know. It's strange, isn't it? Hi, how are you today? I'm sure you're making progress in English. Oh, you aren't feeling well. No problem. Today we are going to talk about that too. Today we are going to start with compound nouns, such as lipstick. After that, we'll talk about not feeling well and where to buy medicines. I have a cough. <coughs> I must go to the pharmacy. We are also going to learn the names of some parts of the body. Head, hand, ear. Finally, we'll see how to get advice and how to follow directions for taking medicine. For your cough, take one tablet three times a day. In the sitcom, Agatha said to Victor, you can fix the bathroom. Bathroom is a compound noun. Can you guess what compound nouns are? They are nouns that are formed by putting two words together. Can you think of other compound nouns related to the bathroom? Let's see them together. Toothbrush, toothpaste, hairbrush, lipstick, when you aren't feeling well, like Elena, you may have mm, a headache, mm, or a, a toothache, oh, or an earache, or a, a stomach ache, which are other compound nouns. Other common illnesses include a sore throat, a f flu, a cough. <coughs> Victor says, Maybe I'll go to the chemist and get something for her headache. When you are sick, you can go to the chemist or the pharmacy to buy medicines or medications. You can say, I'm not feeling well or I am sick. And I have a, a temperature. My foot hurts. My leg hurts. And so on. But let's have a quick look at some parts of the body. Okay, head, throat, ear, tooth, stomach, leg, knee, ankle, foot. When you go to the pharmacist in the US or chemists in England, you might ask for advice. What do you recommend? Have you got something for a headache? Or have you got something for the flu? When you're taking medicine, it's important to be able to understand the directions. For example, one tablet, once, twice, or three times a day. One tablet every four or six hours. 
one tablet after meals, or before going to bed, and so on. Okay, our lesson is over. Hmm. You seem better. It seems that studying English is good for you. <laughs> Bye, and see you soon. Victor and Elena. Victor and Lala. Malika, Amira, Valenka, Michal, Katyushka. How are you feeling today? Oh, much better, thank you. I'm so glad. Um, who are these girls? Which girls, Elena? The girls in the book. Oh, them. Girls we know. Hmm. She's a good friend of mine. Her name is Lala. Lala. Yes. You didn't hear about Lala? She's Turkish. No, I don't think so. Lala stayed with us last year for a couple of months. And where is Lala now? Lala's back in Turkey. She has a nice little flat in the center of Ankara. Oh, and she's Malika. She's Swedish. Oh, and what does Malika do? Malika is an airline hostess now. Lovely girl. She has gorgeous blonde hair and the bluest eyes. Oh. The bathroom sink is okay for now, but we really should call a plumber. That's Agatha's almost album. Sorry? Agatha invites foreign students to stay here and then tries to marry them off to me. It's her biggest project. Right, Aggie? <laughs> well, it would be nice. Don't worry, Elena. I promise you they're all still living. Of course. Of course they are. Hi, here I am. What? You want to learn some more English? Good, that's what I'm here for. Today we will talk about the present continuous tense once again. Sorry, I can't talk to you now. I'm teaching. <laughs> After that, we'll talk about friends, our friends, and other people's friends. Finally, we'll learn how to say dates. I was born in July 1987. That isn't true. Let's start with the present continuous tense. A few lessons ago, we said it is used to describe something that's taking place right now, in this moment. What is Elena doing? She's looking at some photos. In this episode, Agatha asks Elena, how are you feeling today? And Elena answers, much better, thank you. How are you feeling today? Well, I hope you are feeling wonderful. Have a look at these sentences. My brother is working in Japan. My brother works in Japan. Using the present continuous, I mean to say my brother is working in Japan in this period. But he doesn't normally work there. Have another look. My son is living with us. My son lives with us. With the first sentence, I'm telling you that at the moment, my son is living with us. But normally, he lives somewhere else. Remember that to convey habitual actions or something which doesn't change for a long period, we use the present simple. I always get up at 6.30, quite early actually. Victor and Agatha live in London. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of friends, right? Let's talk about them. Do you know Lala? Yes, I know her, or yes, I do, or no, I don't. What do you answer if I ask you, do you know Victor? 
Perfect. Yes, I know him. Yes, I do. Of course I know him. Or, no, I don't know him. Can you think of another useful question that you could ask about someone? <laughs> You're really making progress. What does he do? He's a student. Or, what does she do? She's an airline hostess. When you want to know someone's name, you might ask, Would you introduce me? This is my friend Lala. She's from Turkey. Agatha says she has gorgeous blonde hair and the bluest eyes. It's useful to know how to describe people. We've already talked about people's physical appearance, but you can also say something about their personality. For example, Victor is a fascinating man. Agatha is funny. Elena is shy. Let's conclude our lesson by practicing some dates. For example, Lala arrived on March the 15th, 2008 and left on September the 10th. You can also say March 15th, 2008 and September 10th. Lala was born in 1975. Let me congratulate you on the progress you're making in English. I think that's enough for today. See you soon. <laughs> Good morning. 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 So, is it okay to visit you at work? That would be lovely. I can show you the new scarf collection. Oh, are there any left? You didn't buy them all? Oh, don't be silly. I only have three or four. <laughs> Is Churchill's a very big store? Yes, it's uh, huge. It's one of the oldest in London. Oh. It's got five floors. And anyway, I'd be crazy not to use my staff discount. Of course, <laughs> you would. Do you have a break in the afternoon? I have a tea break at three. Why don't you come a half hour before? 2.30? Yes. And I can show you around my department. Where is the ladies' department? On the fourth floor. Just take the lift mm -hmm. and walk through children's wear. Okay. Can I buy you a cup of tea? Oh, yes. Let's go to Churchill's Tea Room in the Basement. We have the yummiest cream cakes. Mm. Mm -hmm. What else do they sell in Churchill's? Perfume, jewelry, menswear. We've got household goods and electronical appliances, books and toys. There's a large furniture selection on the top floor, and we also carry electronic equipment. <laughs> well, uh, ladies, have a nice day. Thanks, you too. Wait, is today Tuesday? Yes, it is. Oh, dear, I have to be at work early today. Mr. James asked me to help out in the children's shoe department. Good. I need to buy some children's shoes. Who for? My niece, Mercedes. How old is she? She's 12. Uh-huh. And what size shoe does she take? Um, she's a Spanish 36. I think that's a three here. Okay. Oh, that will be fun to choose shoes for her. Mm -hmm. What colors does Maria like? Mercedes wears a lot of pink. Pink? Oh, she's still a little girl. Agatha. Uh -huh. You need to be at work early today, don't oh, you? Yes, I must go. <laughs> okay. Bye. I'll see you later. Oh, hi. Sorry. I had to buy some presents, so I went shopping in a big department store. Are you ready? Fine. Let's get down to work. Today we'll talk about the verb form will, its contracted forms and its unusual negative form. I will be your teacher for some more lessons. It'll be fun, won't it? After that, we'll learn about the various departments in a big store and how to ask for directions. Excuse me, where is the jewelry department? Finally, we'll see a short dialogue about buying shoes for a child.
In this episode, Agatha tells Elena that Mr. James needs her to help in the children's department. Elena says that she needs to buy, do you remember what? A pair of shoes for her knees. Perfect. It will be fun to choose shoes for her, says Agatha. Along with it will be fun, you can say it will be interesting, it will be exciting, it will be useful. Now let's look at the verb form will. Will is used for what is going to happen in the future. The conjugation is I will be, you will be, he, she, it will be, we will be, you will be, they will be. The contracted forms are I'll be, you'll be, he'll be, she'll be, it'll be, we'll be, you'll be, they'll be. The negative form is I will not be, you will not be. But be careful, the contracted form of will not is I won't be, you won't be, he, she, it won't be. All right, let's practice with some examples. Will Agatha be at work today? Yes, she will. Will Elena visit her early in the morning? No, she won't. Will you study hard? Of course you will. As you have seen, to create the interrogative, you invert the subject and the verb. You will study hard becomes will you study hard. Now, something completely different. Elena asks, where is the ladies department? Some department stores are really big, like the one where Agatha works. So it's useful to know how to ask directions. Let's see some examples. Where is the children's department? Where is the men's department? Can you think of other departments? <laughs> sure. Stationery. Books. Accessories. Food. And so on. Right. Here are some questions that you might ask. Excuse me, I'm looking for children's shoes. I'm looking for the toy department. Now, let's see a short dialogue between a shop assistant and a customer. Uh, good morning, how can I help you? I'm looking for children's shoes. Uh, how old is the child? Uh, he's 10. What's his size? Size 7. What colors does he like? Red and blue. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you, they're beautiful. But how much are they? 55 pounds. Okay, I'll take them. Now you're ready to go shopping and I'm ready to go. See you next time. Bye. Are you okay, Agatha? What's wrong, Aggie? Mr. James says I'm always late. Oh. Mr. James says, I'm always shopping. Oh, no. Mr. James says, I don't take care of the customers. Mr. James says, I should look for another job. Oh, <laughs> oh. I'm so sorry, Agatha. Don't worry, it, it's okay. I'm so unhappy. Why don't you call Harold? Yes, that's a good idea. Why don't you visit, Harold? Yeah, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perhaps you could meet him at Oxford. I don't like Oxford. 
All oh, those nasty students. Maybe you two can meet somewhere for the weekend. Oh, the weekend? Mm-hmm. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to go? I've always wanted to see the Isle of Wight. Let me call my travel agent. Yes. Yes. Do so. Good afternoon. Can you suggest a nice hotel on the Isle of Wight? Agatha, do you want a three star or four star? Oh, I don't need much. Mm -hmm. As long as they have a nice view. Yes, that's fine. I'd like to book a double room for two, arriving Friday evening and checking out on Sunday. Perfect. Oh, and Harold will need internet access, and I definitely want a hotel with a spa. Does the Solent Star Hotel have a spa? Okay, fine, perfect. I'd like to take a nice tour on Sunday. Do they have a tour of Osborne House? Can you organize a tour on Sunday for two to Osborne House? Okay. Can the guests leave their luggage at the hotel until Sunday afternoon? Okay, yes, that's fine. Yes, Johnson. No tea, that's right, Johnson. Okay. Can you bill my credit card and then they will settle later? Okay. Yes, fine. Just a moment. What a nice surprise this will be for Harold. Oh, yes, darling Harry. He works too hard. Mm. Well, you can both relax this weekend. It will be very romantic. Mm. <laughs> oh, Elena. Yes? I don't have anything to wear. I'll need to buy a new outfit for the weekend. Hi, how are you? Tired? I hope not, because today we are going to talk about holidays. So let's start. Today we'll study the ing form and how it can be used both as a verb and as a noun. I don't smoke. This is a no smoking class. Then we'll talk about the expression as long as. As long as you don't smoke, you can stay for dinner. Finally, we will see a short dialogue between a receptionist and a hotel guest. In this episode, Agatha is feeling low because her employer is not satisfied with her. She says, Mr. James says, I'm always shopping. She is using the ing form of the verb to shop. I like shopping, but if I say shopping is fun, it's not a verb, it's a noun. Right! In fact, the ing form of a verb can be used as a noun. We often see examples of the ing in public signs. Can you think of some of them? No parking, no smoking, no camping. Very well. You can also say smoking is forbidden and parking is not allowed. Let's move on to another subject. If you remember in the episode, Agatha said, I don't want much as long as the hotel room has a nice view. So let's look at the expression as long as. Agatha wants a hotel as long as it has a spa. Spa means thermal bath or a hot tub or a health center. And I don't want much as long as you study hard. I'd like to conclude this lesson with a short dialogue. Dylan and I are going to spend a weekend at the Solon Star Hotel, and we have just arrived. Uh, good evening, madam. May I help you? 
my surname is Green, and I've booked a double room for two nights. Uh, let me check. Uh, here it is, a uh, one double room for two nights. Uh, can I see your passport, please? Uh, yes, of course. Here you are. Uh, thank you. All you need to do is to fill the registration card. Sure. At what time is breakfast? Breakfast is from 7 to half past 9. Uh, can we have a wake-up call at 7 o'clock? Certainly. Here's your key. Thank you. Well, I hope we are going to have a wonderful weekend. Maybe you should plan a weekend somewhere too. Bye for now and see you soon. Almost. There. Do you have everything? <laughs> Victor, what time does my train leave? Oh, here. See so your ticket? It leaves at 12.35. From where? Which platform? Agatha. Remember, you need to take the underground to Waterloo. And then you'll have to look at the monitors to see on which platform the 12.35 leaves for Portsmouth. Okay? How long is the trip from Waterloo to Portsmouth? Um, it's about an hour and a half. And at Portsmouth I get off? Yes. You take the ferry to ride on the Isle of Wight. What time is the ferry? Here, you have an open ticket, which means you can take any of the ferries. Well, well how often do they run? There's one at uh, 14.45, 15.15, 15.45, and 16.15. They leave every 30 minutes. And how long is he? It's about a quarter of an hour. Oh, well, that's easy. Yeah. And you can sightsee in Portsmouth for a while. There's the tower, the keys. The, the keys? Uh, yes, it's near the port. Oh. Oh, the keys. Yes. There are excellent restaurants and shops there, I think. Is Portsmouth a nice place? Yes, Portsmouth's a lovely town. I may go to the keys for afternoon tea. <laughs> Harold says he'll be at the hotel at about 7. Oh, yes. I'll have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. You enjoy yourself. Oh, can I leave my luggage somewhere when I go to the Keys? I don't know. There should be a luggage room at the station or the ferry. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a great weekend. The weather this weekend is supposed to be fine. That's fortunate. Yes, you'll be able to walk around. <laughs> and what are you two doing this weekend? Oh. I'm working, and I want to go to see a museum or an art gallery. Um, there's a good exhibition on at the Tate Modern. Oh. Victor, you should take Elena. Show her the sights. Um, I need to study for my final exams this weekend, Agatha. Yes, you must study. Okay, Agatha, let's get you to the station. I'm ready. I'll carry your bags for you. Okay. Bye, Elena. See you. Bye. Have a nice time. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hello there! Welcome back to your English lesson. In our story today, Elena is getting ready for her trip to the Isle of Wight. Oh, I love the Isle of Wight. It is so pretty. And all that lovely sea air. Would you like to go? Well, funnily enough, today we are looking at different means of transport, like the train, the airplane, and we will also look at buying tickets and asking for directions. Excuse me, what time does the train arrive? I'm waiting for my mom. She's coming to visit me. Oops, and we mustn't forget the grammar. We are going to study phrasal verbs today. Verbs followed by prepositions like get on and look out. Right. Let's look at some means of transport. We can say, what time does the train leave? 
The train is my favorite way to travel. So relaxing. But I also like traveling by plane or airplane because it is so fast. What time does the plane arrive? I don't like traveling by bus or coach. Too uncomfortable. How much are two coach tickets to Southampton? But I like going by ferry, being surrounded by all that water. It's wonderful. Now, imagine that we are taking the train to London. Where do you want to visit? Well, of course, we must go to Buckingham Palace. Do you know how to get there? We can ask somebody when we arrive. Uh, how do I get to Oxford Street? I simply must buy a new pair of shoes. Then we can go to the Tower of London and the British Museum. Oh, what if we take a plane to New York? What would you like to visit there? The Empire State Building? Wall Street? Oh, I know. Let's go to the MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, my favorite art gallery. Okay, let's have a look at today's grammar. Phrasal verbs. Elena has to get off the train at Portsmouth. Get off is a phrasal verb meaning to leave the train. Phrasal verbs are made of a verb plus a preposition. There are thousands of them in the English language. Let's look at some more. To come in means to enter. To sit down. I'm sure you've heard that one before. Come in and sit down. Then we have to try on. I want to try on that jacket. To look at. What are you looking at? To look for. Um, I've lost my keys. Help me look for them. To look after. Can you look after my cat while I'm away? Or to look up. Look up this word in the dictionary. And to look out. Look out! There's a car coming. Useful expressions, aren't they? Well, I don't know about you, but I need a rest. Well done for working so hard. I'll see you next time. Bye! Good morning. Good morning. Anything uh, interesting in the paper? I want to see some exhibitions. Wow. Well, there's the uh, Tate Modern. Oh, yes. I'm going to that. Oh, okay. I'm meeting a ton. I want to see a few things. Well, you won't have uh, much time if you finish work at 7. I finished early. I'm uh, working from 9 to 1. Oh, I see. But I'm confused, though. There are many places to see. Uh, can I help you? Please. Okay, what are you more uh, interested in? Uh, literature, art, or history? I'm interested in uh, art and literature. Okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Okay. The uh, Tate Modern closes late on Saturdays, uh -huh. uh, but uh, most of the other museums close around 5. So, okay, see here? Uh, I suggest you take yes. the tube to Barbican, then you go alongside here, uh, Aldersgate Street, mm -hmm. and uh, left into the Museum of London. Okay. Okay. Oh, and, and right next to it is St. Paul's Cathedral. Oh. You must see that. It's very famous. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can walk uh, across the Millennium Bridge. There's uh, fantastic views of the uh, embankment uh, on the area around the Thames. Brilliant old and new architecture. Lots happening. I wish you could come too. So do I, Alina. Um, which street do I mm. take to the bridge? Oh, uh, you just go along here. Uh, you can't miss it. Oh, and then which direction? Uh, do I go straight here? Oh, uh, no, no. You, you should walk along the river here and then turn right, and that's called Queen's Walk. You'll see the Shakespeare Globe Theater. Oh, Globe! Yes. <laughs> Um, I suggest you get to the Tate by 7. It's a big place. And you can catch the tube home from Blackfriars here 
or Southwark here. Sounds good. Thank you. I really hope you enjoy it. I think I will. Oh, hi everyone. Are you ready to learn some English? Well, today in our sitcom, Victor is helping Elena to plan her day. Doesn't it sound like fun visiting all those exciting places? Lucky Elena. Well, today we are going to look at the word most. Most women like shoes. And the word must. You must see my new pair of boots. After that, we are going sightseeing in London, just like Elena. So I hope you've got your comfortable walking shoes on, because off we go. So, in the sitcom today, Victor said most museums close at five, meaning the majority of museums. Notice how we use the plural with the word most. Most shops open at nine. Most hotels have room service. And also, most English people love drinking tea. Mmm! <laughs> that reminds me, I must buy some more tea. We use the word must to emphasize that we should do something. Victor said to Elena, you must see St. Paul's Cathedral. He said must because it's something he strongly feels Elena should do, because the cathedral is famous and beautiful. We must visit Stonehenge. We must go to the Louvre. We can also say something is a must, to mean it is something we must do or see. The Parthenon in Athens is a must. Okay, now, for something different, let's go sightseeing in London. London is full of amazing museums and galleries. I want to go see the Science Museum and the Natural History Museum. They are fascinating. And the Tate Modern and the British Museum. They have some of the most famous art in the world. We can go and see the beautiful bridges like the Albert Bridge and the Millennium Bridge. Ooh, and we must go and see the Tower. The Tower of London is wonderful. I think we might need to relax after all that. Maybe we could go for a picnic in one of the beautiful parks. Hyde Park or, or Richmond Park. Then, in the afternoon, we could go to some of London's famous churches and monuments. We can visit Westminster Abbey the Temple Church and the Albert Monument. What a busy day! And we haven't even been shopping yet. Okay, now let's look at how we can ask for directions. Excuse me, can you tell me how to get to the nearest bank? You go straight ahead and then turn right. Where is the nearest post office? Go up this road and turn left. And the nearest chemist? Take the second street on the left. Remember that in England they say chemist, and in America they say pharmacy. How far is the nearest cinema? How far is it? <laughs> it's not very far, only 20 minutes on foot. We say on foot or by car, by bus, taxi, train, etc. So, the cinema is 20 minutes on foot, and the theater is half an hour by bus. Now, let's look at a couple of very useful expressions. Excuse me and sorry. We can say excuse me to get through a crowd to get to the tube, for example, or to ask someone for directions. We say sorry if we step on someone's foot. Do you see the difference? Well, now you know how to find your way around London. Good job! See you next time for another English lesson. Bye! Sure. Okay. Can you meet me at the library? 
Okay, great. I'll see you. Good morning. That was Sam. S Sam's my friend at St. Martin's. He's helping me with technical stuff for our exams. That's nice of him. <laughs> How was yesterday? Oh, the walk and the museum you suggested were fabulous. I loved the Tate. So did Chan. I'm glad you liked it. I also had a good day at work yesterday. Oh, what happened at work? Oh, they asked me to work in their cafe, the cafe upstairs in the video store. Oh, that's marvelous. Congratulations. I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know how to be a waitress. No, it's not very difficult. You don't think so? No, you'll be good at it. I will? Mm-hmm. Sure, you'll just have to learn the names of the things on the menu. Mm. What if they ask me questions? Do you have their menu? Yes, this is it. Uh, let me see. Okay, let's say I'd like something to eat. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like a hamburger. Oh. Uh, no, m make that a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Does the cheeseburger come with chips? I don't know. Let me see. Mm. Yes, it does. And uh, what do you have to drink? I'm having coffee. And not you, Elena, the cafe. Oh, cafe. <laughs> yes. Um, we have coffee, tea, fruit juices, soft drinks, and uh, mineral water. I'll have an orange juice, no ice. Oh, no ice. How much is that? Which? How much is the bill? My total. Oh, let me see. Uh, twelve. That will be? That will be uh, twelve pounds and seventy-five. That's so expensive. I hope you don't say that to your customers. No, no. You will be great. You will make much more money in the cafe. I will? Sure. You'll make loads of tips. Mm. No, I've got to run. Um, bye. Bye. Good luck. You too. Hello, my lovely students. Welcome back to another lesson with me, Gabrielle. So, in our sitcom today, Victor helps Elena's English by practicing a restaurant dialogue with her. Isn't he kind? Lucky Elena. Well, today in our lesson, we are also going to study restaurant and snack bar language, as well as nouns that come from verbs, such as to paint, painter, and ways of talking about abilities, like I can or I'm good at. Okay? Let's get started. Right. Let's have a look at some verbs and the nouns that come from them. So, we have the verb to write. Someone who writes is a writer. Someone who dances is a dancer. Easy, right? Are you a good dancer? Huh. I wish I was. Someone who drives is a driver. You just add ER to the verb. Now, these words are usually used for men and for women. A cleaner can be a man or a woman, but we do have a small group of words that are specific to one gender. For example, we have a waiter and a waitress. For the feminine word, we add ESS. -S. So we have Prince and princess. Actor and actress. See? Often we change the names of these jobs to a name that refers to both men and women. So instead of waiter or waitress, we can say server. Instead of air hostess or steward, we say flight attendant. Wow, you are even learning to be politically correct in English. What progress! Now, in our sitcom today, Elena said, I don't know how to be a waitress. 
This is a way of talking about our abilities in English. For example, I, well, I don't know how to dance. Oh, it's so embarrassing. But I know how to make marmalade. My husband Dylan doesn't know how to ski, but he can sing beautifully. Lady Coco is terrible at catching mice, but she is very good at uh, sleeping. <laughs> and I know what you are good at, speaking English. Yes, you are. Okay, let's go to our virtual snack bar. I'm hungry. How about you? Let's look at some food words. We could order a cheese sandwich, a ham roll, a chicken salad. What do you think? Hmm, I would quite like bacon and eggs. No, perhaps not. I need to watch my weight. Maybe I'll get a salad and some chips. But don't tell anyone. What about something to drink? A coffee? Espresso? A cup of tea? Some fruit juice? A soft drink? I think I'll have some sparkling mineral water with ice and lemon. Mmm, so refreshing. Okay, so that's one chicken salad, one portion of chips, don't forget they call them french fries in the States, and a glass of sparkling mineral water with ice and lemon. Oh, please, we mustn't forget to say please. Then, when we want to pay, we can say, how much is that? Or, can I pay please? Okay? Good! Well, all this talk of chips is making me hungry. I'm going to get a snack. Good work, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi. Hello. Um, did you accept that waitressing job today? Oh, yes, mm. I did. Thank you. How was your day? Oh, it was uh, normal. Did you study for your exams? Not exactly. What did you do? I made something. Oh. For you. For me? What is it? Open it. It's a drawing of me. It's... You drew this? It's very beautiful. You're very beautiful. I'm home! Welcome back. Aggie, hi. How was your trip? Oh, we had a wonderful time. That's good. Uh, what was ride like? The place was fantastic. <sighs> what did you do there? Did you go to the house? We had a tour of the Osborne house, yes. And the hotel was comfortable? Oh, yes. Harold didn't want to leave our room. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> what else did you see? Oh, the most fantastic shops, ceramics, craft works. I got almost all of my Christmas shopping done. So what's been happening here? What's new? Mm, nothing. nothing. I see. Hello everybody. Wasn't that an exciting episode of our sitcom today? And how romantic. I can't wait to see what happens next. Anyway, today we are going to learn all about the past simple. First, the past simple of the verb to be. Then, of regular and irregular verbs. Yesterday, Dylan came back from a long trip in the US, and I was so happy to see him. And what about you? How was your day? Did you have fun? We will also look at how we ask someone to describe somebody else. For example, what is Lady Coco like? 
<laughs> She's cute. A lot of work, huh? Okay, let's go. So, in our sitcom today, Elena said, How was your day? Was is part of the past tense of the verb to be. We have I was, you were, he, she, it was, we were, you were, they were. He was very tired this morning. We were very happy to see you. Now, Victor painted Elena a picture. Painted is an example of the past symbol of regular verbs. We just add ed to the verb. I talk, I talked. You jump, you jumped. He wants, he wanted. Notice how the third person singular stays the same as the other persons in the past simple. I finished, she finished. Easy, okay? But then we have the past simple of irregular verbs. I go becomes I went. I went to China. He went to Ireland. They went to work. Another example is the verb to fly. I fly. I flew. They flew to Singapore. The bird flew to the lake. To eat in the past becomes ate. To come came. To bring brought. To buy bought. But you've probably already heard some of them. To make the past tense of the verb to be negative, we just add not or N apostrophe T to the verb. I wasn't happy. You weren't there. She wasn't angry. We weren't home. To make the verb interrogative, we just invert the subject and the verb. You were tired. Were you tired? He was late. Was he late? To make the other verbs negative, we have to add did not or didn't. I walked to the door. I didn't walk to the door. He kissed her. He didn't kiss her. We went to Rome. We didn't go to Rome. Do you see how we use the infinitive of the verb in these sentences? We don't need to put them in the past tense. The word didn't does that for us. To make these verbs interrogative, we add the word did before the subject. Victor painted it. Did Victor paint it? Yes, he did. She played the piano. Did she play the piano? Yes, she did. No, she didn't. It's not too hard, is it? Okay, finally, let's look at how we can ask someone to describe somebody or something. Elena asked Agatha, what was ride like? We use what plus the verb to be plus the subject plus like. If I want you to describe your brother, I say, what is your brother like? He's clever, funny, and he has gorgeous blue eyes. Wow, what a man. What was the film like? Well, it was boring. What is India like? It's a huge country. Well, we've done a lot of work. Good job. Go and have a rest and I'll see you next time. Bye. Agatha, are you okay? You seem a little sad. Well, I rearranged the furniture. But I always feel sad when I leave Harold. I know what you need. To have a shower? No, you need to have a break. A few days away at a beauty farm. <laughs> That's a good idea, Victor. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything tomorrow? Well, I, uh, I haven't got anything planned. I'm not doing anything special. I think I'll send you to the Burbank Beauty Farm in Somerset. Mm -hmm. Well, I... 
Oh, but who's going to look after this place while I'm away? I've got to clean the oven, vacuum the carpets, wash the curtains, and then there's ironing to be done. Well, Agatha, I'll do that for you. Oh, but you don't know where I keep the mop, the vacuum cleaner, the iron. Come on, Agatha, I know. I live here, remember? It's decided. Pack your bags. You're going to a beauty farm. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to call Betty now and see if she wants to come. I'm so excited. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it's nice being alone. Yes, just the two of us. Mm, what shall we do? We can move a little closer. But we promised Agatha we would clean the house. Well, we can do it very quickly. And I'd like to change some of the furniture while Agatha's away. She changed things without asking me, and I'd like this house to, to say something about me. It's not just Agatha's house. Right. Okay. Uh, chores now. Uh, chores? Well, what are chores? Oh, chores are the little jobs around the house that we need to do. Oh, I see. Yeah, remember, sweeping the floor, dusting the furniture, doing the shopping. I love shopping, but that's not a chore. <laughs> Doing the shopping is very different from going shopping. Doing the shopping is food shopping. Oh, that reminds me. I have to go to the supermarket to get some housekeeping things. Uh, do you need anything? No, um, I'll stay here and start vacuuming. Oh, great. I'll be back in half an hour. Are you sure we don't need any special ingredients for dinner tonight? <laughs> no, Chan is bringing something from the international food store later. Not that Chang again. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your English lesson. So, how about our sitcom today? Lucky Agatha going to a health farm. I'm so jealous. Anyway, let's look at today's lesson. We are going to study the future tense using going to. Then we will look at special expressions using the word have. Hmm, we're going to have fun. And finally, we will learn how to talk about household chores and appliances. Oh, do you mind if I dust the desk during the lesson? I'm joking. Then maybe, if you study hard, we can go to a health farm too. <laughs> so, the future tense using going to. If we want to speak about something that we have planned for the future, we use the verb to be plus going to. This weekend, I'm going to visit a health farm. Next summer, he's going to travel to Asia. Agatha asks, who is going to look after this place while I'm away? Do you remember? Let's see another sentence. They are not going to go to the cinema tonight. In this example, you can leave out the verb to go and simply say, they are not going to the cinema tonight. We can also use going to if we want to make a prediction based on what we can see at the moment. For example, if it is cloudy, we can say, I think it's uh, going to rain. Do you see? Now, let's compare this to the other future form, will. We use will when we want to make an offer. I will help you with your homework. We also use it with a promise. I won't forget to call you. We use it for predictions without evidence. You'll love the film. And for instant decisions. For example, if the phone rings, we say, I'll get it. Right, let's change the subject. We are now going to look at certain expressions that use the word have. In the sitcom today, Agatha said she needed to have a shower. Victor said, you need to have a break. We have many uses for the verb to have in English. You can have breakfast, have a drink, have time to do something, have a baby. Wow! 
I think I am going to have a nap after all of this studying. Do you know what I hate doing more than anything else? Ironing clothes. It is such a boring chore. Do you remember what other chores Agatha mentioned? Cleaning the oven, washing the curtains, vacuuming the carpet, and then Victor mentioned sweeping the floor, dusting the furniture, and doing the shopping. No, not the fun kind of shopping. Doing the shopping means shopping for food and household items. It's so boring. To do these chores, you need an iron or a broom to sweep the floor, a mop to wash the floor, a vacuum cleaner. You know what? I think I'll let Dylan do the vacuuming today. I, I don't think I feel very well. Mm -hmm. I better go and lie down. See you next time. Happy studying. Here's the tea. Can you pass me the mug? Now, tell me all about the beauty center. Oh, marvelous. It was a wonderful idea. The mud treatment was good for my skin, and the thermal baths were so relaxing. You should try it. Did you have a massage? Massages and aromatherapy in all the rooms. I feel great. In fact, you should go there with Victor one day. Mm. What do you think? That's a good idea. Uh, so, it's not only for women. No, lots of men go there. It's a wellness center and a fitness center, too. I think Victor would enjoy it. I'll talk to him about it. Elena? I want to ask you something, woman to woman. Of course, woman to woman. What do you think about Victor? Um, well, I like Victor. He's a friend, a good friend. I mean, as a woman, do you think he's handsome? Well, physically attractive. <clears throat> Well, uh, yes, um, he's an handsome man. Are you attracted to him? Uh, I, yes, he, uh, he's attractive. I, I like him. I'm a bit worried. Does he ever talk about his friends? Oh, yes. Uh, he often mentions his friend, uh, Paul. Paul? A friend? I've never met anyone called Paul. They go to the gym together. To the gym? What for? Exercise, swimming, you know, uh, working out on the exercise machines. I wonder who Paul is. Thanks for making the tea. <laughs> Give me a hug, dear. <laughs> it's okay. <sighs> Hi, Lena. Hi, Agatha. How was your day at the beauty center? Oh, fine, fine. Have you just been to the gym? Uh, yes, how did you guess? <laughs> oh, with Paul. Actually, yes, but you don't know Paul. No, I don't. But Elena told me about him. We'd love to meet him. Why don't you invite him to supper one evening? I'll cook him a special meal. Of course I will, one of these days. So, did you like the changing we did while you were away? Yes, yes, great! Now, Victor, I suggested that you and Elena should go to the beauty center together one day. Uh, me? Uh, to the beauty center? Well, it's for men, too. Oh. And there's a fitness center. Well, I suppose you're right. Would you like to do that, Elena? Yes, I would. I, I'd love to. And uh, I might invite Paul to come too. No! No! Just the two of you. That's the whole point.
Whew. Hello everyone. I've just come from the gym. What a great workout. I feel so healthy. So, what happened in the sitcom today? Yes, Agatha started asking Elena what she thinks about Victor. Hmm. She really should learn to mind her own business. Oh, the word should is very important in our lesson today. We will be studying that followed by verbs with two objects. Let me give you a tip. Our sitcom is going to end in a real surprise. And finally, we will see some terms and activities relating to wellness. Ready? So, Agatha said to Elena, "You should try the thermal baths and you should go there with Victor one day." Remember, we use the word should when we want to give someone advice or make a suggestion. The word should never changes. I should, you should, he should, etc. And we use it with the infinitive. If you want to lose weight, you should do more exercise. She should go and see a doctor about her bad back. If they want a sheep holiday, they shouldn't stay in a luxury hotel. If you want to say that something is a rule or that it is obligatory, you have to. You have to fasten your seatbelt. He has to do his homework. They have to study English. Yes, it's obligatory. <laughs> Now, in the sitcom, Elena said, "Can you pass me the kettle?" This is an example of a verb with two objects. In this case, the verb is to pass, and the objects are me and the kettle. I can lend you some money. Will you give him a letter? We normally put the person first and then the thing. Give him a pencil. If the thing is a pronoun, it goes after the verb. Give it to me, okay? Now, what do you do to keep fit? Do you go swimming? Do you go to the gym like me? I love to use all of the different exercise machines at the gym. Dylan likes to lift weights. He also goes jogging twice a week and does kickboxing. <laughs> my mom does Pilates. She's in great shape. And my dad, he plays golf. All that walking is great exercise. What do you do to stay healthy? <laughs> well, that's all for today. Well done, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Can you peel the potatoes? Did you buy the steak? I'm starving. <laughs> steak and potatoes for me. Victor, forget the potatoes. We have to talk. You really should spend more time socializing. You must get out more. Go to the movies or something. But I have to prepare for my exams. Well, you can study during the week, not at the weekends. You must dedicate more free time to seeing your friends and making new friends. Like my new friend, Paul? No, no, I didn't mean him. You should take Elena out with you. She could practice her English. Well, I have to study a lot. It's my final year. I can't remember the last time you went out with a girl. You're not ugly, Victor. You do attract women's attention. I can't understand it. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Thanks for that. Where's the butter for frying? You don't need all that butter. You should use olive oil instead. It's better for you. I read an article in the newspaper about depression and the foods we eat. What we eat. Affects our personality and how we react to others. I know. If I don't eat, I'm not a nice person.、Mm. Okay, I can't live on meat alone. Oh. There are the food groups: breads, cereals, rice and pasta, poultry and fish. And you can't exclude eggs, vegetables, fruits, beans, milk. Yeah, yeah. You use too much butter. You don't have to give up your butter and chocolate biscuits. I'm just saying you should use less. 
It will help you to stay healthy and fit, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Sure. But you have to eat more vegetables. They're an important source of vitamins. I always have uh, tomatoes and olives on my pizza. Oh, dear. I can't help you. You should go to a doctor and have a checkup. That's enough. I, I can't take it anymore. You have to stop trying to control my life. You should respect my life and how I live it. I'm sorry. I just think that you should do things... You should. You shouldn't. You can't. You must. You mustn't. Not everyone is like you, Agatha. Thank goodness. I don't have to explain my lifestyle to you. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh, did I offend him? <laughs> Hi, ready for your English lesson? Oh dear, things are a little difficult at the moment between Agatha and Victor, aren't they? That was quite an argument, typical brother and sister. Well, I hope they can resolve their problems soon. Anyway, what are we studying today? Well, first we're looking at modal verbs to talk about ability. I can sing very well. Permission? You can have some more candies. Responsibilities and obligations. I know you have to study a lot. We must go now. <laughs> Not yet. And then we will look at words relating to nutrition and diet. One of Agatha's favorite subjects. So, Victor asked Agatha, can you peel the potatoes? We use the modal verb can to talk about ability. I can make marmalade. I can't dance. Remember, I'm terrible. We also use can to ask for permission. Can I go to the bathroom? Can we listen to the radio? We can use can't or mustn't to say something is forbidden. You can't go out tonight. They mustn't touch the oven, it's hot. To talk about responsibility and obligation, we use the word must or have to. You must come home early tonight. I must go to the dentist. You have to tidy your room. She has to study hard for her examination. We use the phrase don't have to to say that something is not necessary. We don't have to go to work on Sundays. The concert is free. You don't have to pay. Now, can you tell me what the main food groups are in English? I bet Agatha can. We have proteins, like fish, meat, and eggs. Carbohydrates, like bread, pasta. Fats, like butter and oil. Fruits and vegetables, like apples, carrots, and broccoli. And as Agatha said, it is important to have a diet that is rich in all the food groups. A balanced diet with lots of variety. She also says that vegetables are a good source of vitamins. This is very important. I don't imagine that Victor is getting many vitamins from the olives and tomatoes on his pizza. Do you? Anyway, that's all for our lesson. I'm going home to make a nice healthy salad full of vegetables and protein. And then I think I'll have a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> well, I need a good balance in my diet, don't I? See you next time. Bye.